All right, my friends, welcome to yet another rousing edition of Ask David. Who's excited? I'm excited. All right, let's get at it. So here's the question. Hey, David, should I include a private Facebook group in my products and programs? So should you include a private Facebook group in your products and programs? Hmm. Good question, young grasshopper. Let's, let's chat let's chat about this. Good good topic here for sure. So first of all, uh, you know, a Facebook group's not going to make or break you, right? It's not going to be the key, the massive key to your success or <laughs> or the key to your de- demise either, okay? So it's not going to be either one of those. Let's just get that out of our head for uh, first and foremost, right? So it's not like that massive of a deal, if you will. Uh, you know, yes, sure, it can add some sizzle. There's a little, uh, there's some sexy sizzle that goes along with the Facebook groups and also, uh, you know, a community aspect to your products and programs, meaning that you're getting people to, uh, you know, basically network and interact with each other, which is awesome, right? So it adds some sizzle and community. Uh, but do you have to have one? Uh, is it something that, you know, you're, you're sitting there online like, David, do I have to have this? The answer is no. You don't have to have this. So get that out of your head. If you're sitting there stressed about it and you're worried about it and all the different things that can happen, you know, no, you don't have to have one. So let me get that answer out of the way. But I want to I want to lay out a couple kind of pros and cons of it. So the good, uh, what are the positives? Is community. Like I said, you know, you get your your customers are interacting with each other, they're forming relationships, they're networking. That that is that's fantastic. Um, you know, like I said, networking. That would be the second thing is you know, they're networking, they're they're getting to know each other, other people going through the same process they're going through. So that's always fun. You know, no one, you know, loves to go through stuff alone sometimes. Um, also people helping people. So, you know, a big community aspect of doing Facebook groups is that they all help each other, right? Like your customers help each other. They're in there, you know, someone asks a question, someone else comes in. Um, sometimes they have the wrong answer, but be that as it may, you have people helping each other and that, and that is a good thing. Now, how about the negative side of it? Well, yeah. Is there some bad? Sure. So first of all, it can be a time consuming mess if you don't set expectations. I'll talk about this more in a second, but wh- what I mean by expectations is that, you know, what people, you know, can and can't do in the group, who's monitoring it, um, are, are, are you setting it up where you have to be in there responding to everything and it becomes like a coaching group? Well, that's that's a whole nother monstrosity uh, that you probably want to avoid. And also, you know, it can be a little frustrating. I mean, like, you're going to have people in there that kind of tire kick and, you know, aren't following your program exactly and, you know, kind of just you get some complainers and things like that. So that obviously can be something um, that you have to think about as well. And also, you know, with a Facebook group, it's going to come monitoring and logistics. So, you know, letting people in. Um, if you have a refund policy or something like that, and let's say someone refunds, making sure that they're removed from the group. Um, you know, if someone says something stupid uh, or, you know, yeah, not stupid, but, you know, something hateful or ridiculous, you know, having someone to go in there and monitor uh, and deal with that kind of stuff. Or, or you know, if, if let's say you have a rule in the group, like a, a rule I'll explain with you in a second is that, You know, I tell people in our private Facebook groups that one of our rules is don't tag me in posts in the Facebook group, right? Like don't tag David in posts in in the Facebook group. And, you know, if someone does that, you're going to have to have someone go in there and monitor that and detag it and tell them, hey, that's against the rule. So bottom line is there's things that go. It's not as just easy as like, okay, let's just open up this group and and we're off to the races. So that's some things to keep in mind. Um, Again, there's not a concrete answer to this, good or bad. I, I can lay out both ways, and you can make the decision ultimately for your product and program. Now, the challenge is that if you don't establish rules of your Facebook group, they can get out of control. And I've seen this from, you know, one, uh, being in control of several Facebook, private Facebook groups, and also being a member of some. I've seen this on both ends. If you don't establish rules and kind of the point, um, they can get out of control. And so here is an example of something that I did with our Create Awesome Online Courses private Facebook group that's just for customers. And I'll read you this up on screen. And this is how we establish rules. So I say, so because I love you, we're doing a Facebook group, uh, meaning this group is just for peeps who have purchased Create Awesome Online Courses and are enrolled in good standing with a few ground rules. Rule number one, have fun. Rule number two, remember to be cool, no being a jerk face. Rule number three, focus on giving more than getting. 
Rule number four, shameless self-promotion is not what this group is about. Networking with your peers, getting feedback, giving feedback, sharing accomplishments. Yes, that is what it's all about. Number five, remembering this is a group about the community. While my team and I will be popping in every now and then, this is not the place to ask questions directly to me or tag me in posts. This is a peer group, and it's about you guys, not me. And number six, finally, Captain Obvious here, but keep the topics related to online courses, as of course, that is the focus of the group. Uh, Ready to get going? Join the Facebook group right here. So basically what you're doing there is you're establishing the culture of the Facebook group, you know, and some things that I wanted to highlight in, in this Facebook group is I wanted to, number one, I wanted to keep it on topic. I wanted to keep it about talking about online courses, you know, and so if you're doing a, a, a product and program or whatever it might be, you know, maybe it's something you want people to talk about everything that's going on in their life or maybe you just want to keep it laser focused. I love the laser focus. I love the laser focus. That's what I did. Number two is I established that it was very, very important that this group is about the community and the networking. It's a user group. It's not a coaching group um, where people are, you know, it's just barraging me with questions. Because I'm telling you right now, as a product creator, if you're going to do that, you're going to end up creating a monstrosity for yourself. If it becomes just a group where people can just barrage you with questions 24-7, you're going to end up hating that group uh, in, in a very, very short period of time. And I love this group. And so that's that's one of my tips to go with that. So you know, that, that is kind of my rules outline. You can obviously use them, do whatever you want with them. Um, an organic way to go about this, by the way, uh, and this is something that I've done before, and feel free to steal this strategy, is to start with no Facebook group with your products and programs. And as things grow, or it's specifically requested over and over again, go for it. So for Create Awesome Online Courses, I didn't have a Facebook group for, I don't know, first six, seven, eight months, something like that of when the program was out. And then I started, I started getting a lot of requests though. It started being like, oh, can we do a group? We want to interact. We want to see what other people are doing with their courses. And I said, fine, let's do it. So you can definitely do the organic route of not launching with it, but adding it later on, which is something I've done. And I think it's worked out uh, better. And again, only if you want to. There's no steadfast rule here that's going to make or break your course uh, or your products or programs um, You know, if, if you don't do this. So again, it is not required, but if you want to go for it, add, some, add a little uh, delicious sizzle, go for it. Facebook groups are pretty cool if you do them the right way, all right? So reminder on the way out, if you haven't already, become a Rise VIP for free. The rise to top.com slash VIP, enter your email. I send out my advice and tips and strategies and invitations to webinars and workshops and products and programs, all that kind of cool stuff goes directly to my Rise VIPs first, the risetop.com slash VIP. Make sure to sign up right there. I will see you next time. This has been David Seidman Garland. And remember, if you want some fluff, you know what to do. Go pet a bunny.